I'm standing at the incredibly historic site of Avdad in the Negev Desert of Israel. This site is an old city that dates back to 300 BC. On this week's episode, we're going to search for the special desert birds of Israel and we're going to culminate this show with our search for the newly described and incredibly rare desert tawny owl. Let's go birding. The Negev Desert of Southern Israel, a tapestry of geological wonder. Ancient landscapes that rise and fall, twist and turn and melt into each other like caramel and chocolate ice cream. A land of contrasts. All at once, beautiful and barren, hostile, yet strangely inviting. At first glance, devoid of life. But spend some time here and the desert unlocks its vitality. A remote haven thriving with animals, large and small. Twice a year, the Negev becomes host to one of the greatest natural spectacles on earth. migration like no other. 500 million birds funneling through the Negev like countless grains of sand through an hourglass. I'm standing right at the top of the Eilat mountain range and to my east is Jordan and Saudi Arabia. You can actually see both countries from here and just over the ridge is Egypt. And this place is one of the best raptor watching migration spots in the world. Every year over a million raptors will funnel through this area on their migration from Africa right up through into Europe. It's absolutely spectacular. The numbers, I mean, you can see 20,000 black stork in a season. You can see 500,000 steppe buzzards, 400,000 honey buzzards, and then hundreds of thousands of steppe eagles and a variety of other birds of prey. 
really, really spectacular to come here, sit on top of these ridges and just watch these raptors flying over in droves on a daily basis. This is a LUT, one of the best migration spots in the entire world. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917. And by the Society for the Protection of Nature in Israel. Educate. Love. Protect. And by Pelagic Polarized Sunglasses. Every time that you travel birding to a specific destination or a different country, there are always these special enigmatic birds that you have to find. And one of these birds in Israel is the McQueen's Bustard. For most of the year, the Negev receives little to no rain. The fierce sun bakes the soil, killing all but the hardiest of organisms. This parched landscape is a tough place to eke out a living. But December brings the first welcoming rains. Several months, the desert is transformed as life-giving grasses and flowers sprout in abundance. The rains rejuvenate the Negev's wildlife and send libidos soaring from hyraxes. to sand grouse. But there is one libido that might need a touch of explaining. This is the flamboyant display of the male McQueen's Bustard. This particular male returns to the same courtship stage year upon year to dance for the ladies. When he knows a potential mate is looking, he begins by puffing out the black feathers on the neck to form a dapper collar. Then the male erects the white quills and bends his neck backwards into an S shape, resting his head on his neck and strutting forward with carefully measured steps. If a female is impressed, he is in luck. If not, he will try again with renewed vigor. Unfortunately, the numbers of McQueen's Bustards have declined drastically in the last 20 to 30 years with some estimates right up to 50% of the global population due to the manipulation of habitat, but more importantly, illegal hunting of McQueen's Bustards. A tragic story was in 2014 when a prince 
of some royalty in the Middle East went out on a hunting expedition for 21 days and shot 2,100 McQueen's bustards. That's a hundred of these special birds a day. And of course, with cars being able to drive really close up to the lekking grounds or the communal staging grounds for these birds, it's made it a lot easier for these hunters to gain access. And something really needs to be done to stop the slaughter of this, one of Israel's most beautiful birds. Arabian babblers are one of the most interesting birds to be found in all of Israel. These birds have a very, very complex social structure and there's ranks between individuals in a group. You'll have one dominant pair, you'll have helpers that'll help raise the young and you'll have this dominance rank. These cooperative birds breed together in groups and there'll be helpers that will help a dominant pair raise their young. And these helpers can be young from a previous generation, but they can also be individual birds. And it's believed that this altruism or this helping between individuals increases the social stature or rank of certain individuals in the group. So the more they help, the more they kind of rise in rank, in stature in that group. Very, very interesting birds, Arabian babblers. The two of them in the tree behind me are preening each other and showing this perfect example of how they work together in a group. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, the world leader in optics since 1917. And by Hobie Mirage Drive Kayaks. Enjoy nature effortlessly. After the rains, the Negev starts to dry up again and temperatures can exceed 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The striking hooded wheat ears and the similarly looking white crowned wheat ears seem to be able to handle the extreme heat with little ill effect. The aptly named desert larks, too, appear to be oblivious to the soaring temperatures. Other resident birds like green bee eaters get some respite by sheltering in the vegetated wadis or dry riverbeds. Any standing fresh water is hot property. Crested lark, chucker partridge and pale rockfinch flock to the life-giving water that remains. Sparrows, doves, and Arabian babblers drink their fill. The desert is home to several species of hardy but seldom seen birds called sand grouse. And the best way to see these birds is to wait at a place that they come to faithfully once a day. Just had a flock fly in over here, just behind that log, sitting on the rocks. Nice flock of crown sand grouse have just flown in, probably about 50 feet, 60 feet from the watering hole. And they're just accumulating there. They've got this really soft call which they use to communicate with each other. They're preening, early morning sun warming up before they're gonna go have a drink. One of the best represented families of birds in Israel are the sand grass. And these are so sought after by birders. Anybody coming to Israel wants to come and see the sand grass. And now we've been at the hide and we have just got killer point blank views of 
probably the hardest sandgrass to see in Israel, the crown sandgrass. Really, really spectacular. There's only believed to be approximately 200 pairs of this bird left in Israel. Sandgrass are such fascinating birds. They'll come to the watering holes, sometimes at night, sometimes in the morning, depending on the species, and they will drench their feathers with water, carrying up to half a fluid ounce of water back to their chicks in the desert. They make a nest in a little shallow depression, and they'll come and they'll actually give that water to their chicks. They also have very downy feathers on their belly, which is used as really great insulation against the hot and the cold climates in the deserts. What magnificent birds, crowned sandgrass, right here in the Negev desert. One species of sandgrass that is seldom seen during the day is the nocturnal Liechtenstein sandgrass. During the daylight hours, the brightly patterned males and drab females rest up under sparse vegetation and only emerge after dusk to drink. One of the hardest of the sandgrass species to find in Israel is Liechtenstein's sandgrass. But this spot, a reservoir outside the town of Eilat, is one of the best places to view them. They come in just before dark, so it's going to be very, very tough to film them. I don't think we're going to have enough light, but we're going to give it a go anyway. There's two, there's two coming down to drink. Wow, look at that one drinking. You know, all too often, this is going to be the best view that you get of Liechtenstein sandgrass. This Birding from the Edge segment is brought to you by Nikon, manufacturers of the Edge line of optics. I'm floating in the Dead Sea. Such a magical sight in Israel. From here, we're going in search of desert tawny owl. But for now, I'm going to wallow in one of the saltiest bodies of water on Earth. This is Birding from the Edge. This Birding Adventures episode is powered by Nikon, your world leader in optics since 1917, and by the Israel Ministry of Tourism. Israel, land of creation. I'm in Hatzava, in eastern Israel, close to the Jordanian border, and I'm very humbled to be here with Haduram. Humbled because tonight we're going looking for a very, very unique owl, the desert tawny owl. And I'm humbled because it has this man's name. This owl is Strix Hadurami. The ancient Judean desert stretches from the northeastern Negev to the Dead Sea. After the sun goes down over the breathtaking landscape and the moon rises eerily over the still mountains, the remote desert canyons unlock a fascinating secret. For this is the haunt of the desert tawny owl. A bird mentioned in the Bible and early Hebrew scriptures, but only described to modern science in early 2015. Our team spent several nights in the desert searching for this mysterious owl until our recordings were answered by a distant call. The desert tawny owl has been a victim of mistaken identity for over 130 years. In the late 1800s, two ornithologists collected two specimens of owl, and they both described the species as Hume's owl. Now, over a hundred years later, finally, desert tawny owl is found to be significantly different from Hume's owl. Over 10% of its genetic makeup is different to the Hume's owl species. After all these years, finally, desert tawny owl 
assumes its rightful place with full species status. You know, the other name for this owl is Lilith. And Lilith means the wife of the devil or spirit of the night. And this haunting call that comes from these canyons in eastern Israel is something that you'll never forget. Wow, had a run that was just incredible to see a bird of which there's only probably about 200 birds in Israel, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. What an incredible bird, wow. Well, uh, James, relax, because uh, I'm more excited, you know, because this was a really rare scene. Normally this bird is much higher, and today we got the absolute best view with a group in 20 years. I mean, it's amazing. And actually, I'm jealous of you because I didn't brought my video camera today and you got the first ever video film of the species. You break all record and I'm really jealous but happy for you, James. I will never forget this moment. To get the first video footage of this bird ever recorded is something very, very special. Come to Israel and experience the magnificent bird life of this incredible country. Thank you so much. Our golden bird for this episode, Strix Hadorami. <laughs> <laughs>